I started in the Organized Crime Intelligence Unit uh, in 1986. So at that time, uh, uh, shortly thereafter, Louis uh, surfaced back on the streets, and uh, it was uh, Louis Monarchio. Louis Monarchio was always well respected by the mob guys. Uh, you know, he's an old school mafioso, goes back a long way in organized crime in, uh, in New England, uh, connected with uh, people out of New York, and, you know, his name is synonymous with uh, uh, organized crime. I had occasion to conduct surveillance on him uh, through my uh, younger years in the intelligence unit. Uh, there have been times when I attempted to interview him, but uh, he was not uh, uh, receptive to that. But he was always a gentleman. I, uh, I, I have to say, he was always a gentleman to me and to law enforcement. Uh, but he made it. Uh, he made his point known that uh, uh, you know, we were on the other side of the fence. He was on the other side of the fence, and uh, catch me if you can. So, uh, aside from him being a gentleman to law enforcement and a gentleman to people uh, on the street, uh, he had a reputation by has a reputation by the. Uh, uh, mobsters in, in and about the uh, greater Providence area, and New England for that matter, uh, to be a no-nonsense guy. How uh, so? Well, he, he uh, uh, even though he's small in stature, he, he walked tall and carried a big stick. Uh, these people respected him. Uh, we, I know for a fact that the inmates that would get out of uh, prison, with, with, that would realign themselves with the criminal uh, associates, would uh, go to um, Louis Monacchio for, uh, for his uh, acquiescence in whatever they're doing. Uh, if for, for example, uh, the years ago, a few years back, uh, uh, I arrested him for uh, stolen appliances. Didn't seem to me as though uh, Luigi Monacchio needed stolen appliances at that time, but that was uh, someone paying homage to him uh, for a score that they did. So it's that type of thing, uh, and he... Uh, he was angry with himself for even getting caught up in that because uh, it was uh, sometimes greed overtakes these people. But he, he, we, we know that he was uh, um, in charge of, uh, when I was in an, oh, the organized crime unit, we know that he uh, oversaw many uh, bookmaking operations, loan shocking operations. Uh, I conducted a, a wiretap years ago where uh, there was a lot of cryptic talk about uh, Louis Vinacchio and how they had to. Uh, uh, pay him uh, his his rent. How did they refer to Louis Monacchio in that those wiretaps? That guy. That guy. Mm -hmm. What do you make of his rise to power? As you pointed out, he was you kind of alluded to it. He was on the run for a while. He was missing for ten years. Suddenly, he comes back. Uh, he's pretty much off the law enforcement radar screen, and then suddenly, he's acknowledged by law enforcement as being the reputed boss of the Patriarca crime family. Again, he's been missing for ten years. What do you make of his rise to power? and how that happened. Well, you know, Louis Monacchio was a, a major name even years ago uh, when you had names like uh, Raymond Patriarca Sr. and uh, uh, Nicky Bianco, who was the titular head of the uh, Patriarca crime family for a while. And, uh, and w when those players were out of the way, uh, Frankie Salemi and Louis Monacchio became very close. Uh, you know, I've, I've surveilled uh, Louis with uh, Frank Salemi on several occasions. Uh, and they, they never really uh, give up their, uh, when they go to prison or go away, they never give up their, uh, their association or their, their, uh, their contacts uh, in that, uh, that business of theirs. So when uh, Louis took to the streets again, uh, he had put together his team, uh, his, his faction, and w we believe that uh, for a period of time he was... Uh, uh, the boss of La Cosa Nostra here in New England. So he had strong ties to the Salemi faction of the Boston Mafioso, is that right? That's, that's correct. Um, it, it, any idea of what his ties were to the Angelos? Was he less friendly in that area? You know, I, I can't speak to his relationship with uh, Gennaro Angelo or Donato Miguel. I, I, I don't know. Um, he's a healthy guy, isn't he? Very healthy guy. As a matter of fact, that's a great uh, question because he, he's a guy that, uh, you know, people watch... Uh, mob movies and see these guys smoking cigars and, uh, and uh, living uh, the good life. Well, Louis Monacchio uh, got up early in the morning and went for a jog, usually uh, in the streets of Providence uh, behind uh, Rhode Island College. Uh, stayed in tremendous shape, watched what he ate, uh, would recommend to his other mob associates that they uh, go on a diet. I always got a kick out of that. 
I, I, would actually, I actually joked with him years ago about one of the uh, mobsters that was uh, very heavy, and I told Louie he had to put him on a diet. Uh, he got a kick out of that. But he, uh, yeah, he had a different, uh, he has a different lifestyle than some, uh, uh, some mobsters that people are uh, used to seeing on, uh, uh, in the movies. I mean, it's not it, the image it, we it, have, it, right? It's not the image that people have with uh, a, a mob boss. And, you know, Louie could be seen jogging in the morning. He could be seen wearing his polo shirts and, and driving a, uh, a, a compact car. So it wasn't the image that people have watching these movies. I think that those movies, these movies, uh, uh, sensationalize organized crime. Anyways, I think it's uh, it's it's way over the top, and that's that's kept this thing going. Now, the organized crime is not what it was 20, 30 years ago. And here's a guy, uh, Louis Monacchio, who was uh, who lasted. He outlasted a lot of the other uh, major names in organized crime. And uh, why is that? And that was one of my questions. It, beside you picking him up for that appliance bust, until now, he's been able to kind of fly low on the radar screen. My thought on that is he stuck to some pretty careful areas of organized he, crime. He, he stuck to some pretty careful areas. He kept a low profile. I mean, we obviously knew, obviously knew who he was, but uh, he, you'd never see him uh, uh, making a scene in a, uh, an establishment in Providence or... or, or personally uh, threatening someone, that, that was not his style. He had people around him do his work for him. Um, what do you say to people, like, as you pointed out, he's a gentleman, he, a lot of people see his picture and they see kind of a doddering elderly guy. Um, what do you say to people who, are, who say, do you see, he's a really nice guy, uh, why don't they leave him alone? Uh, why are they going after him? How do you respond to that? Well, you know, that's, uh, we've heard that, I've heard that throughout my career with uh, mobsters, uh, people who were arrested, even white collar criminals. Uh, you know, people think, you know, he's a nice guy. He's, uh, uh, they, he ought to just get a slap in the wrist. Uh, why, why did, uh, why wasn't he arrested? Is that what you, I guess uh, what why I'm was asking, he able to stay under the radar screen? Is he, a, in your, from your perspective, is he or was he a dangerous guy? Well, you know, because of the pending um, case on him, I'm going to refrain from categorizing him as a dangerous person. Uh, but I will say that uh, Louis Monaki was a real deal. Um, smart guy. He, uh, he, correct me if I'm wrong, he spoke multiple languages, well-read. Is this why they call him the professor? Uh, I, I'll say he's, a, he, he's obviously a very intelligent guy. I've had several uh, conversations with him in... Uh, you know, it's just the era that he came up on, and he, he's not, he, he didn't receive a formal, formal education, but uh, you, you can tell that he's a, he's a bright guy. And he was running uh, uh, an industry throughout New England, and he could have been running, he could have been the CEO of a major company. He's an intelligent guy, he's a no-nonsense guy, uh, not unlike a lot of CEOs you might meet on the street. But uh, beyond that, he's a mobster. I gotta ask you: Are you, are you a Shaxx guy or a Shanks guy? You know, I I don't even like playing with those nicknames because uh, uh, who, who knows what the you know I know the the media had a little fun fun with it and people in the, in the streets of Providence uh, have had fun with that lately. But uh, I know I've heard it both ways on the street. Um, I actually joked with him about it one time. And what did he, he say? He basically says, what, what does it matter? This is actually when he was in handcuffs, so he said, well, what does it matter now, what my nickname is? Uh, I've heard it both ways, so um, I think only he knows, and what does it really matter? 